Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about the brand new 12 volt car charger for the Yeti Lithiums. So just as a little bit of background, there already was an auto charging cable like this one. And the issue with this is this just took the plain old 12 volts from your car and piped it into the 8 millimeter input. However, if you look at the specs on all the lithium units, they all want 14 to 22 volts. So we've all been waiting a really long time for a solution for the Yeti units. And they just came out with this last week and I ordered it right away. And the interesting thing about this cable is this bump in the middle. What is this magical thing that makes this cord go from a $6 cable to a $40 plus $10 in shipping cable? I was curious to find out. But the main thing is I wanted to make sure that this wouldn't melt and start on fire like the original car charger was doing when plugged into the Yetis. So let's see what we got here. So you can see this is a pretty simple package. This is just like all the other cables that you get. There's no manual. There is just a little bit of information here at the top. So let's rip into this and see what it's like. So first impressions are this thing is really light. Um, build quality overall seems okay. Uh, if you're used to the eight millimeter cables, these feel just like all the rest. They probably use the same wire and everything. Uh, but let's take a deeper look at the 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter here. Um, looking at this, it's pretty standard. It doesn't feel super heavy duty or anything, but it seems solidly built. Uh, this is supposed to have a fuse in it. And typically you get to that fuse by turning this knob here, but I, I couldn't get it off. So I'm sure if I was more motivated with a pair of pliers, I could get it off. But for now, we'll just leave it. Uh, the main body of this is made out of plastic. Um, it has a decent finish on it, but it's pretty lightweight. It has a kind of a light sound when you bang on it. Um, and it has this switch on the front, which is nice. So this lets you choose how much power this is going to draw from your car. So you can either do five amps, which is 60 watts, or you can do 10 amps, which will be 120 watts or so. So that's a nice option so you don't drain your battery as fast. And on the back here, you can see there's a little bit of information. Um, you can see it's CE certified. And uh, so, you know, it's a decent size unit. It's probably the size of like a typical USB charger that you'd have lying around for charging your phone. Um, but you know, the case is light, it's kind of plasticky. Uh, looking at the eight millimeter cable here and how it connects, you see there's some good strain relief there. There's a little bulbous thing on the cable, which I'm not sure what's in there. Um, and looking at the eight millimeter cable itself, it's just like every other goal zero eight millimeter cable. I'm assuming the wire here is 16 gauge. It's not labeled on the wires, but that's what we're going to go with here. All right. So let's unwind this thing and see how long it is. So. Here it is sprawled out. I would say it's about a foot for the 12 volt part. And then this whole stretch here, if we measure it, eh, the whole cable overall is about 10 feet, maybe a little bit longer, maybe 11 if you were to pull it really tight. So let's stick this in the car and see what it does. So first of all, no comments about how dirty my car is. It's winter time, I've got kids. I didn't clean it for the video. So here's my Yeti 1000, it's completely dead. And here is my 12 volt port and my Mazda. The car is running. So let's plug this in here. And oh my, my eyes are burning. I don't know who thought this LED needed to be this bright, but well, there it is. Uh, you can definitely tell this is on. If you have any doubts, it is on. So let's plug the eight millimeter cable into the MPPT charger. And look at that. We are now putting 61 watts or so into our Yeti. So um, this came up really quick. Uh, unlike a solar panel that has a longer delay, this popped right in. So if you know me, you know I like my tests. So we're gonna do a little science here. Started my stopwatch. Um, let's actually turn this all the way up to the higher setting. So this is the 10 amp setting. And go over here and see what it does. So now we're at 116, 120 watts or so. Um, so we're gonna let this thing cook for a little while and see what happens. So uh, my plan right now is just to let the car run for an hour. I don't wanna come back to a dead battery and uh, we'll see what it does in an hour. All right, and through the magic of editing, a little over an hour has passed 
you can see we're still getting 112 watts as input. Uh, but now the unit that was at zero is at 13%. So that lines up pretty much perfectly. It's a thousand watt hour unit. We've been running for an hour and putting in 110, 120 watts. So the meter seems very accurate. And oh my gosh, my eyes are burning again. All right, let's turn this back down to the five amp just to see what happens. And you can see immediately it drops right down, which is nice. It's really nice to be able to throttle this so that you can conserve um, battery in your car or not stress it out too much. So uh, overall, this worked really, really well. So I bet you're curious what kind of magic is happening in this box here on the cable. Um, so I thought I'd try to explain that. So if you plug a meter into the 12 volt output, you'll see you get 12.85 volts coming out of your car. And again, remember the Yeti wants to get at least 14 um, to charge. And so if we plug this in here, you'll see this is actually outputting 15 and a half volts um, out of the eight millimeter output. So some magic is happening in this box to make it a higher voltage. And that magic is what's called a step up converter. So here's an example of one I found on Amazon. Uh, there's lots of different ones. They have step up and step down. Uh, this one is interesting because it actually will step up to 19 volts, which is within Yeti's uh, happy zone of 14 to 22 volts. And uh, you can see this comes in different sizes. So it'll pull different amounts of amps to give you different watts. Um, so I actually went ahead and bought one of these. And you can see when you measure it, it does put out 19 volts, which is nice. Um, now, the interesting thing here is you'll notice my step up inverter had really big heat sinks on it and goal zeros doesn't. And so this thing actually gets pretty hot. The plastic gets hot. Um, the 12 volt plug gets hot. I wouldn't say it gets dangerously hot, or at least it didn't in the first hour, but it's pretty hot to the touch. So I think that's because they're not using an aluminum heat sink. Instead, they're just using a plastic case. Um, so, you know, I would keep an eye on it. I think when I test this again, I'll actually go ahead and run it for much longer and be nearby so I can keep tabs on it. All right, so wrapping up, I think overall this is a solid buy. Um, build quality is good. And, you know, I appreciate that there is about a $20 step up converter in here. And so there's some cost to that. So obviously I wish it wasn't $40, but um, I get why it's expensive. And it delivers in its goal of putting out a decent amount of power. So this thing will put out 110, 120 watts. I just wish this darn green light wasn't so bright. Uh, but that's kind of a minor nit. So, you know, overall, I'm really happy with the purchase. And I think it's sort of a no-brainer if you want to plug this into the car. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. And let me know in the comments if you want to see that DIY step-up converter. And I'll make a video on it.